a symbol of pride and progress burned to pieces. It shows intent that you are trying to scare me. One CU Boulder student speaking out on why he says this is more than just a petty crime. There's hatred out there and it really is a punch in the gut to some of us. C-spot scam. I was expecting to bring home this fat little roly-poly puppy, not necessarily nursing her back to health. A Weld County mother searching for a new best friend, hit with vet bills instead. Plus, Russell's birthday bust. Could frustrations over the season be driving a wedge between the Broncos? The city of Boulder, of course, considered one of the most progressive cities in Colorado. But tonight, a CU student says he was targeted for his sexuality. And he gave us these videos captured last night showing someone removing his LGBTQ pride flag from his fence. But the person didn't stop there. Number 7's Colette Bordelon went to Boulder tonight. She is live in the newsroom. Colette. Yeah, and one of the reasons the student moved to Boulder is because it's such an accepting community. That's why this was so shocking. His pride flag targeted not once, but twice. A pride flag. And it traveled with me all the way from back home in Carolina out here. A piece of home. You know what, I can really be myself out here. I can really just show to the world who I really am. And a piece of self-expression. I'm out here, I'm queer, and I'm here, and I'm here to just show that it's okay. Only five days after Glacius moved to Boulder in August. It was torn down. The old flag had to be strung up again after what his cameras caught happening to the replacement flag overnight on Tuesday. When I went out to go look, that's when I found the burnt flag there. Oh, okay, you get that weird like adrenaline anxiety like, wow, some people really don't want me here. Glacius, who's only 20 years old, saw something else outside his door too. When I uh, came back here, I did notice a bullet um, on the ground and that kind of sets the tone. I view it as a threat and the second violence gets involved with that, that's when it becomes a very serious matter to me. Boulder police are investigating what happened, but a statewide survey shows Coloradans who identify as gay, lesbian, bisexual, or queer are 1.5 times more likely to have experienced a hate crime or incident than their straight counterparts. It, it does still show that there's hatred out there and it really is a punch in the gut to some of us. An attack on more than a flag. I'm never gonna let somebody else's negative beliefs t try and tear mine down because in the end, I'm still me. I'm still gonna do what I do no matter what people think about me. Colette Bordelon, Denver 7. Hmm. For some perspective here, the Williams Institute says nearly 5% of Colorado adults are LGBTQ. That's about 210,000 people. And I looked into a survey by Hate Free Colorado tonight. It found that three in 10 LGBTQ Coloradans say they experienced a hate crime in the last five years. And looking deeper into those numbers, for LGBTQ Coloradans of color, that dramatically increases to six in 10 who said they experienced a hate crime. And if you're a member of the LGBTQ community and are dealing with a crisis, we want you to know there are resources to help. In fact, here's a list of several of the largest organizations. You see them on your screen here. Most will allow you to text them if you don't want to call. They're available 24-7. You can also find this list of numbers on our website, denver7.com. Well, amid a nationwide blood shortage, the FDA says it's now considering changing its blood donation policy for gay men that would allow them to donate without abstaining from sex. The current policy requires men to wait three months after sexual contact with other men before they can donate blood. But in a statement, the agency says it is now weighing an individual risk-based donor screening, specifically for HIV. The FDA didn't offer further details, but potential donors who have had a new male sexual partner in the past three months would be asked more specific questions about their sexual activity. Westminster police say a 13 year old girl is safe tonight after a man kidnapped her Tuesday morning. The girl's brother told police the man had offered them a ride to go shopping, but when the brother stepped away to use the bathroom, the man drove off with his sister still inside and police worked to identify the suspect in the car he was driving. And just before 10 o'clock last night, police found the car, the missing girl and the accused kidnapper. In no way was this person a Lyft driver or a, a rideshare driver. I know there's been some concern about that, but that was not the case. The vehicle was reported stolen. And police identified the man as 45-year-old Bradford Eblen. He has a criminal record and is on parole for stealing cars. Eblen also has gained a reputation online for pretending to be famous band members, as well as dining and dashing. He pretty much said that since like we came all the way out here from uh, Vancouver that like he'd take us to lunch because it was super cool since he was the drummer. Well, that man told us uh, Evelyn never paid for their lunch nor offered up the backstage passes he promised. As of this afternoon, he is in the Adams County Jail. 
A Pueblo man's widow is suing the hospital where he died after she says video shows four security guards putting him in a chokehold last year. Now, released security footage from February 2021 shows Matthew Haskell Jones being physically restrained by four security guards after he was told to leave, but he refused. Now, our sister station in the spring says this started when Jones refused to put on a COVID required mask. Video shows the guards sat on top of him. Jones widow says he was put in a chokehold until he passed out. Jones was taken to the ER, went into a coma, and eight days later he died. Well, today attorneys for Jones widow, Deidre Jones, filed a wrongful death and negligence lawsuit against the guards and Centura Health, alleging reckless disregard by the security guards and that Centura failed to properly train them. Now, negligent homicide charges against the guards were dropped in August. Pueblo County DA Jeff Choster cited insufficient evidence. Now we're still waiting on a response from Centura Health about this lawsuit and the dismissal of the charges. 7,000 postcards just like this will be going out to Park County residents to remember Maggie Long, who was murdered five years ago tomorrow. The postcards will also serve as a reminder that her murder has not been solved. Maggie was a high school senior who was at her family's home in Bailey December 1st, 2017, when she was killed and her home set on fire. The Maggie Long Task Force believes at least three men were involved and a $75,000 reward is being offered. The holidays are here. Some of you might be considering gifting a puppy. Uh, one thing you're probably not worried about, though, is being scammed in the process. Well, Denver 7's Amy Wattis spoke with one Weld County mother about her unfortunate experience. What was supposed to be an early Christmas present for Tierney Salas's two kids turned into what she called a nightmare. Salas spotted this ad on Craigslist, a male and female pit bull puppy for sale in Aurora. So she reached out to the seller to let them know she was interested. The seller told her over text the puppies were eight weeks old, had their first round of shots and agreed to meet in front of the Chili's in Brighton on Monday as a halfway point. It really wasn't an option um, to go to his location. It had to be a meeting spot. She bought this pup for $400 and within a matter of a few hours after the sale. I just noticed something wasn't right with her body. because She was so thin with such a huge abdomen. She took the puppy to Coleridge Animal Hospital where she found the puppy was actually around five to six weeks old and needed a pricey life-saving emergency surgery. And that's where we found the x-ray where we're just her stomach was so engorged with food, so we had to move to a full procedure, open her stomach and physically empty out all the contents. Salas contacted the seller prior to surgery to let him know the puppy was sick and wanted her money back, saying she didn't expect to get a sick puppy. But the seller responded by saying, quote, sorry, but that puppy is going to be just fine. After that, she never heard from him again, nor got the vaccine record she asked for despite multiple calls and texts. I put up an ad of my own of, as a warning um, with screenshots of his ad saying this is what this person's doing. And it was flagged within 20 minutes or so and taken down. It's disappointing to know that somebody is out there doing that, taking advantage of people and you know, neglecting or not caring for animals the way that they should be. It was definitely, definitely pretty extreme. And um, again, puppies that age are usually still on milk. Denver 7 called and texted the seller on both of his numbers and was unable to leave a voicemail both times and never got a text response back. Meantime, Denver 7 contacted Aurora Animal Control after Salas says she contacted them. They're calling this case an open investigation and recommends never purchasing a pet from Craigslist or Facebook since there's no screening process involved, stressing that people need to do their research and go through a reputable source. Amy Wattis, Denver 7. Brighton police say it's against city code for anybody to display an animal in, public pl in a public place for the purpose of selling or giving away the animal. They say if a report's made, they will investigate. Now, Coleridge Animal Hospital says they ended up paying for nearly $800 worth of the vet bill, and the puppy is expected to be okay. And now to the Broncos. The Broncos, yes, having difficulties once again, and we're not talking about their 3-8 and record. Denver 7 Sports Director Lionel Bienvenu has this tonight. Lionel? Well, we've run out of bad things to talk about on the field, guys, so now we've reached the point of we're talking about bad things off the field, like Birthday party? <laughs> that was one of the subjects of today's Broncos coverage. Trying to figure out how many of Russell Wilson's teammates 
went to his 34th birthday surprise party last night and how bad that was. And another theme of the day, the NFL Network report that Russ has lost the respect of many of his Broncos teammates in the locker room. All things are really bad there too. But here's a reaction to that report today at the UC Health Training Center. I got great relationships in that locker room. Uh, so whoever is trying to tear it down, uh, you can't, you know, I think that the best thing about it is, is that it's been an amazing journey coming here, moving here, being here. That's just hilarious in my opinion. It's that, that's funny because I, I don't think it's true. I know it's not true. I know that I know who Russell is. I respect him so much. I respect the way he integrates within our locker room. And I feel like all year he hasn't been able to catch a break. People are just uh, making up rumors about him, whether that be he's not a good teammate or he's lost the locker room apparently or whatever the heck it is. And a lot of it's just so outlandish to me because uh, I get to see him work every day. To me, it's all gossip. I mean, I know how this locker room, we have a fantastic locker room. Russ is awesome, and, and we just need to do better as a team. It's that simple. And all that stuff, you know, it is, it is what it is. Um, you know, I love Russ. Well, that was Hackett today. This is Hack back in July as training camp started. He was smiling, happy, full of energy. And then you saw the picture from today's press conference. The contrast is shocking. If you're not winning as a head coach in the NFL, it'll tear you apart. And this is the Denver 7 sports team trying to stay positive and put on a good face through the season. But as you can see, covering the season has also taken a toll on me, Nick, and Troy as well. Uh, really, there's nothing funny about this. It's been one of the strangest and most unexpected seasons I've ever covered from excitement and playoff talk and Super Bowl relevance to pretty much rock bottom in less than four months. And the worst part is I don't see an end in sight. Oh. And Lionel, you are not alone because frustration is through the roof, players and fans alike. So we want to hear what you think. Keep sending your messages to our Denver 7 voicemail hotline. That number is right there on your screen. And hey, we just might share some of your messages on Denver 7 News. Nationwide rail shutdown would be catastrophic. Lawmakers scrambling to reach a deal and avoid an economic disaster. Sweeping changes coming to Jeffco school start times. We really want to make sure that our parents and our students will see the benefits of this, even if it hurts right now a little bit. Why sleeping in on school days could help health and learning. Another storm headed our way. Winter storm watch in the high country, high wind watch on the plains.